Hey everybody, I'm Reese, and this is Reese Rides. On this video, I'm gonna tell you what a recluse auto clutch is, how it works, and how it is different from the standard clutch. So I wanted to do this explanation of how an auto clutch works before I do the full review of the auto clutch, just to give anyone out there an idea of, of how these things work and to make that review video just a little bit shorter. So this is gonna have technical details toward the end and the kind of higher level, what does it feel like, right up in the front of this video. So if you want the technical details, stick around. Otherwise, stay tuned for the how it feels, basically. So let's get right into it. Recluse is a brand of auto clutch. There are a few manufacturers of auto clutch that I'm aware of. So there's Recluse, I've heard of Revlock, not so much in recent years. Uh, but there's also custom manufacturers that will make auto clutches for bikes that Recluse and Revlock don't make them for. So an auto clutch just means that the clutching is done for you. You still have to shift. So let's start with how a standard clutch works. On a standard clutch, you pull in the clutch lever and all the power is released from the rear wheel. That is if you're in gear. So when you're in neutral, you pull the clutch in, you put it in gear, and then you let the clutch out slowly and give it a little bit of gas to feather it and get going, right? So the way that an auto clutch works is a little bit different. You don't have to use the clutch. You can pull the clutch in, put it in gear, release the clutch quickly, still be standing there, and then give it gas, and it will slowly feather to get you going. So now I'm gonna talk about the technical details of that. So a standard clutch has friction discs and drive plates inside the case here. So they're all in a stack, there's a bunch of them. So it's, it, they, they run an alternating pattern, you know, a friction disc, a drive plate, a friction disc, disc, a drive plate, and so on. So there's a whole stack of these in there. And when you pull in the clutch lever, that stack is decompressed. And so all those discs are allowed to spin independently. So you're not locking your engine to your, your drivetrain, essentially. But then when you release the clutch, all those discs are then compressed. And so it makes it a lot harder for them to spin relative to each other. And then you get drive from your engine to your drivetrain. So with an auto clutch, it also has those friction discs and drive plates. But the difference is there's an EXP disc in this one. So this is a Radius CX clutch. And so it has the EXP disc in there, which I assume stands for expansion disc. And the reason I think that is because that disc is uh, a little bit thicker than the uh, friction discs in, that are already in there. So it sits in that stack of all those friction discs and drive plates. And that EXP disc is made up of wedges. So there are several wedges around the outside of this disc. And so those wedges can slide in and out, basically in a, a circular pattern. So away from the center axis of that disc with the rotation of the engine. And so those wedges drive up a ramp as they move out and cause that EXP disc or expansion disc to expand and therefore compressing all of the other plates together because it's in a finite space. So if you have that EXP disc expanding, it compresses everything together. So when you give the engine, when you give the bike a little bit of throttle, it spins up and those discs through centrifugal motion or centrifugal force are thrown out slowly, depending on how fast you twist the throttle, and will engage the clutch. And it also slips relative to how fast your rear wheel is moving. So it won't just engage right away, depending on what gear you're in. If you're in a higher gear, it will slip more. If you're in first on a, on a lower geared bike, then it will 
kind of bite right away. So that's kind of the technical details of how the recluse clutch works. So what are the implications of this? So basically you can come to a complete stop in gear without having to pull in the clutch. Uh, you could fall over and the bike will stay running and you can just pick it back up and keep on riding. Um, you can come into turns uh, and stomp the rear brake and that back tire will lock up but the bike won't stall and then you could just power on and keep going. So there's a, there's a lot of benefits to this type of a, a clutch. So I wanted to demonstrate really quickly how this looks in action. So I'm gonna start the bike up, put it in gear, and let the clutch out. And the wheel is spinning, but that is that will happen even if you have the clutch in on the stand. So I'm not using the clutch. And I'm gonna to come to a complete stop. No clutch, still running. It's gonna get going again. Here's from a different angle. No clutch, complete stop. Keeps running. And that is how a recluse clutch works. So look for more videos in the future and a full review on the Recluse Radius CX Clutch. I hope you found this informational and maybe a little bit entertaining. And uh, I'll see you all on the next one.